Hi, in today's video we have something a little bit different at the shop. This is a new tone model L36 door chime. The L36 was what they call the kitchen clock chime. So this would be, this is the clock cover portion and behind it recessed into the wall cavity would be a standard new tone two note chime base. This is an electric clock and it's the motor is powered by the same transformers that, power, that powers the doorbell. This is one of the cooler chimes. The L36 was called the Elite when it was new and it was made, it's a late 50s through mid 60s chime. I think this particular one was probably made around 1965 or so. It was sent in by Martin and it has a common problem that all of these chimes have sooner or later which is the clock has stopped working. The doorbell funk portion works fine, it's just the clock no longer keeps time. So what you're looking at here is sort of an anodized aluminum grill and then it has these little plastic balls around the dial to denote the hours. The quarter hours, the three, six, nine, and twelve are red. So I suppose it was easier to tell what time it was from across the room. And also on an earlier version of this, these little round balls were made out of wood and it was denoted in the installation manual that they could be the red ones could be painted any color you wanted to to match the decor of your kitchen the uh, 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock which aren't here are actually have threaded studs on the back of them and that's what holds the clock face to the wall so again the problem with this one is the clock no longer runs so let's we're going to take a look at it here and see if we can repair it for martin so if i turn it around what you'll see on the back is it has a clock motor here and this is what's called a Telecron motor. Telecron I think was a General Electric brand and they made primarily encased or enclosed motor and drive assemblies for different types of clocks, not just new tone wall clocks but clock radios and mantle clocks and they were using all sorts of clocks. This portion here is the drive assembly and down here is the coil and the two leads for the power. This is a 16 volt model and then there's the chime gear drive down inside here. A little hard to see. Anyway, we're going to disassemble this and we're going to see if we can uh, get Martin's clock working again. To remove the motor assembly from the clock face, there, is, are, there are these two screws that hold it on. So let's go ahead and loosen these. And there are some spacers that space it off the mechanism. And here we have the motor assembly. Let's go ahead and put the clock aside and take a look at this. So here we have the motor assembly. It's been removed from the clock face. And again, what we have here is this is what would be more typically referred to as a skeleton motor design. The skeleton refers to this metal, these metal plates that are riveted together. And then you have the uh, coil through the center of the plate. This creates the, the electromagnetic field that you need to run the motor. And the first thing you want to check on one of these is you want to check and make sure that the coil is good. So we're going to take our ohm meter. And I know you can't see the multimeter, but we're going to test across the two coil terminals. And what we're getting is about... 11 ohms, which I believe is about what it should be. So I think the coil is good. If the coil is bad, then you would have to find a replacement motor to rob a coil from. Or I have seen people rewind coils by hand. That's kind of a tedious thing to do and may make it uneconomical to repair. So the problem with this is what happens to most of these, it's this assembly. It's the Telecron assembly. And what you can see here is this is a little drive gear and this meshes with the other gears inside the clock movement and this is what makes the clock operate. And what happens to these over time is it's a sealed unit and inside the circular part there are other drive gears and it's full of grease. And over time the grease hardens and the strength of the unit isn't high enough to overcome the resistance from the thickened or frozen grease 
and the gear won't turn. And if we take a small pair of pliers and we very carefully, without ruining the gear, try to turn it, the body will turn, but the gear doesn't want to turn easily and it should. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the Telecron unit from the frame of the motor and all you really have to do is wiggle it and pull it out and there it is. Now this is a sealed unit. There are no, for, the, for an amateur, even for us here at the shop, we don't open these up. There are a couple of people around the country that can rebuild, open these up and rebuild them. It's rather expensive and again, it may make it more expensive than the clock is worth. So we're going to try a simple fix and see if we can loosen up the grease so it will run again. So here you can see the Telecron unit and I've cleaned up the outside of it just a little bit to take the dirt and grime off of it. And you're probably asking, well, what's he going to do with it? How is he going to see if he can free up the grease inside so it will run again? Well, it's very simple. We're going to heat it up. And what are we going to heat it up in? Oh, wait, a toaster oven, because that works really well. So I've got, this is just a standard toaster oven. I've got it set at about 140 degrees on bake, because we're going to bake this unit. And I'm going to put this in here. And I'm going to let it warm up. It's probably going to take 15 or 20 minutes to reach the uh, temperature of the inside of the oven, about 140 degrees. And we'll come back and see what happens. So while our Telecron unit is baking in the oven, let's take a quick look at the clock face and the rest of the gear drive assembly for the clock. I'm just going to operate the gears manually from behind. And you can see... The second hand goes around, as does the minute hand, and the hour hand follows accordingly. And all you really have here, it's a little bit hard to see, but you have the gear drive assembly that's sort of encased between this metal plate and this other metal plate, and these are riveted together. And while the gears are exposed, and it's easy to move the large gear with your finger, which drives all of the other gears, because of course they're all interconnected together, it seems to be reasonably free. It turns relatively easily, and I don't think that it would be wise to try to unrivet this and play around with the gears. I might put a little bit of WD-40, maybe a drop or two on the pivot points that I can see and make sure that they're lubricated properly. But as far as I can tell, messing with the gear drive assembly, not something that really needs to be done. Unless there's a definite problem with it or you can't turn it at all because the gears are frozen, I would leave well enough alone. We're trying to make the clock better, not make it worse. So we're waiting for the uh, timer to go off to check our Telecron unit. So I'll get back to you as soon as it comes out of the oven. So while our Telecron motor unit is in the toaster oven baking, it's been about 20 minutes now and it's coming up the temperature nicely. I thought I'd give you a quick uh, demonstration of how you can verify that the coil and frame assembly is good. So this is a 16 volt coil because most new tone doorbells are 16 volts and I have it connected up to my AC bench power supply and it's set at 16 volts. And what's really interesting is if you take a small metal screwdriver, you can put it into the circular opening where the Telecron unit fit, fits and it actually, you can feel the magnetic field. It makes the screwdriver vibrate and it attaches the, the it attracts the screwdriver to the frame. And you can also tell here are five little ferrous metal screws and this is energized and if we pass the frame over the screws the magnetic field attracts them it's not super strong but it is strong enough to pick up the five little tiny screws and if I turn the bench power supply off The screws fall down. Well, most of them fell down. A couple of them are still stuck. I guess there's some residual magnetic force in the frame because even with it turned off, it looks like it would pick up one and then, yeah, 
it'll still pick up one so there's a little bit of residual magnetic force in the metal frame perhaps it becomes magnetized over time uh, since this is like more than 50 years old uh, but it's just interesting that you can do this it's strong enough to draw the screws to the frame and allows you to pick them up you can actually hear it vibrate and then shut it off and they'll fall off. Anyway, so I'm going to go in and check on the Telecron unit, see what we're up to temperature wise. So our Telecron unit is done. Apparently it takes about 45 minutes to warm it up. It's about a hunt at about 145 degrees right now. I took it out of its little aluminum pan and you have to hold it with a pair of pliers because it is 145 or so degrees. We'll check it with the infrared thermometer, eh, maybe 135, good enough. Uh, if you hold it in a cloth so you don't burn yourself, you can actually very carefully grab onto the little drive gear and it turns much freer than it did before. And actually, if you spin it, you can see that it's freed up nicely because the grease inside has softened and by spinning it you help redistribute the grease although that's not really quite enough this is the important part so what we have to do now is sort of renew the grease a little bit and thin it out so it doesn't want to harden up again so what we're going to use is a little three-in-one oil this is a spray can. It also comes in a little bottle that you can buy. And what we want to do is put a little bit in the well around the drive gear. And what you'll see is, of course, since it's the body of the metal case is hot, it thins it out rather quickly. And on most of these Telecron units, underneath the gear, in this little brass portion that protrudes through the steel case, there's actually a little port in there. And if you spray some on it, it will find its way down inside. The other thing that happens, one of the reasons that heating it is important, is because when you heat something up, all of the bits and parts of it will expand from the heat, the metal, the grease, the gears inside. And then as it begins to cool down and the parts start to contract, it should pull the three-in-one oil into the sealed case. And because three-in-one oil lubricates, cleans, and prevents rust, see, that's what it says, it has probably a little bit of solvent in it that's the uh, cleans and prevents rust part I'm pretty sure and uh, it should mix in with the grease inside the Telecron case and thin it out a little bit so when it cools down uh, it doesn't harden up again and we're right back to where we started so now I'm going to let it cool down for a while and see what we have so it's been about a half an hour and I applied many many little applications of the three-in-one oil into the well around the gear and manually turned it with the needle nose pliers each time and you could actually see how the uh, three-in-one oil would disappear down underneath the gear and again if we hold the gear carefully with the needle nose pliers and we give it a quick spin it operates much freer than it did even when it first came out of the toaster oven. So the gear drive seems to have loosened up nicely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reinsert this back into the metal frame in the right orientation. And we're gonna apply power uh, and the gear turns. Let me move the camera so you can see, or maybe I'll just move this, it'll be easier. So here, if you watch very carefully, you can see the gear turn. This unit says it's stamped on the case 
that it runs at 3.6 RPM. I believe that these are made in different speeds based on their application, uh, but that's what it says on this one. So now it turns. Uh, it's not drawing much in the way of current, but I wouldn't really expect it to. And it's cooled down to basically room temperature. I think we're about uh, we're about 74 degrees right now. So that seems to be about right. So I'm going to put this back into the uh, clock mechanism and put it all back together and try it out and see what we have. So here we have our reassembled Newtone L36 Elite door chime. Put the Telecron unit back in the metal frame. I mounted the metal frame back on the clockwork mechanism on the back, uh, remembering to put the spacers in uh, that keep it the gear at the right position so it lines up with the clock drive gears properly. I set the time at 12, it was 12.54 when I turned it on. Uh, you can see that the second hand is going around. I will let this run on the bench for at least 24 hours. I'm going to leave it on overnight. Uh, cool, that way it'll reach ambient temperature in the shop at night. It gets to be about 60 degrees uh, to make sure it's going to be all right. And then I'm going to pack it up and send it back to Martin. He can put it back on his kitchen wall and it'll probably be good for another 25 or 30 years. So this is a fairly easy repair and if you're a little bit handy and a little bit careful, careful being the important part, uh, you can probably take care of your Newtone uh, clock or your Newtone clock chime also or you can always send it to me and I'll do it for you. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and you found it interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, if you like our channel and there are other things that you learn and find interesting, please subscribe to it, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.